As a homeowner, chasing bumps in the night outside your property with a long gun is a really bad idea. Today we see. Hi everybody, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. It comes to us from Jacksonville, Florida. This is not a paid endorsement, but Cigars Daily is a friend of Active Self Protection, and like Active Self Protection, they are active in the fight against human trafficking all over the world. If you like cigars, check out their excellent YouTube channel and pick up some sticks to support the work they do. This car that you see pulled up in front of this house, you can see it's after 10 p.m., is actually full of cops on a drug stakeout for another house. And you can see kind of in the backyard there, the homeowner has kind of come out to see what's going on with these guys. And then he's kind of, you know, checking them out, whatever. And then he goes back in the house. I'm speeding up this just for the sake of time. He's going to turn his porch light on and off several times, clearly as a marker to them. Hey, I'm awake. I see you. Get out of here, whatever. But it's a bunch of cops on a stakeout. They're not going anywhere regardless. So now what's going to happen is he is going to come back out and he is actually armed with a rifle. And so he is going to come out into his front yard here, not knowing who these guys are, thinking that maybe they mean to invade his home or something like that. But he's going to come out, show the rifle to the front of the car, go so far here now as to actually kind of bang on the hood with the rifle and then point it at them, at which time he is going to get them to come out. First shot from the back seat, second shot from the front seat. He gets a shot off. And now you are going to see the officer in the back seat gets out and just goes to work. And they shot him multiple times. He did not make it through that. This is really a terrible tragedy. And we need to think about what went wrong. Man, this is a bad outcome. We have an entire seminar on home defense basics and how to do the best to plan your family's home defense. It was one of our online seminars. I put a link in the description. If you would like it, go pick that seminar up. I would appreciate you supporting the work we do in doing that. And if you're a gold patron member, email us, it's yours free. So a bunch of cops on a stakeout here tells me probably not the world's greatest neighborhood. That said, I totally get that this man who seemingly from what I can tell is not a bad person. He's a good, sane, sober, moral person. And, and he has the right to have a firearm in his home, has the right to be aware of his surroundings, has the right to defend himself and his family in his home without any question. And, and even I think this strategy here of turning the light on and off may not have been a bad idea if they were casing his house to go, oh, okay, wait a minute, somebody's awake. I don't want any more to do with him to kind of try to scare him off. But it doesn't work here. And the big mistake that he made then is coming out of the house with the firearm on his person and deciding to use that as an intimidation tool. That was a huge mistake. Again, if you get into this spot, they won't go when you turn the porch light on and off a couple times, whatever, you're paying attention to them. They know that you've seen them. They're not going anywhere. The right answer here is to call 911, is to call into the authorities and ask for a drive-by, ask for a check. In this particular case, I think it probably would have then given him some confidence. They say, hey, you know, we'll check in with them, whatever. Actually, you know, that you're okay. That's not a danger to you. Go back in your house, whatever. Now, I don't know if they'd have told him that because it's a stakeout, whatever. But I mean, your answer here is to call the cops. Now I get it in a lot of times here that, that they might say, hey, we don't have the manpower for that. There's nothing that we can do. Your answer there is not to go outside your home. You're putting yourself at risk for death and, and you're gonna, your, your bargain here is I'm gonna go outside to have a, a potential gun battle with an unknown number of people of unknown capability and unknown armament. That is a bad tactical decision. So even, you know, again, from a legal perspective, we could talk about whether it's a good idea legally or whatever, but from the perspective of good tactics, this is a terrible idea because you are exposing yourself to danger. Far better to stay in your house, arm yourself if you want to, and, and just not go on the offense. We are self-defenders, not offenders. We are not offensive, we are defensive. So he comes up and now, again, these guys are outside his property. They're on a public street. They're not doing anything wrong. And when, of course, he, he then is showing them the gun. Quite frankly, this is, again, terrible tactics because he's put himself very far forward. So he's not doing anything where he knows what he's about. He's not using a B pillar or a zone of safety or anything like that. He's put himself in a place where literally everyone in that car can shoot at him if they are so armed. And so he's put himself at, at a literally probably the worst possible place other than immediately in front of the grill where they could run him over. Really bad idea all the way around. So from a tactical perspective, this is a huge mess. Then what you're gonna see him do is again, you know, just taking our time and seeing what happens with it, he is going to then bang on their car with his gun and raise it up to them. Now friends, this is where 100%, 
I don't care if this is a car full of cops or just private citizens. Any reasonable person would be at fear of death or great bodily harm from somebody pointing a rifle at them while they are legally parked on the street. Now, I don't know if they're covering his driveway or whatever, but again, they're, they're in a place they have the legal right to be, and, and anybody would feel at risk of death or great bodily harm. He is committing aggravated assault here. He doesn't have any reason that a reasonable person would say that he should be pointing a gun at people. And because of that, again, it's completely irrelevant whether this is a police officer or a private citizen, they absolutely have the right to defend their life using deadly force when someone puts them at risk of death like this. And so I think the officer's actions here are 100% justified. And, and I get it again that he is worried about what's going on in his house or worried about his family in there or those kinds of things. But, but he has become the offender. He's not a defender now. He's an offender. And that is putting him in a place where I don't blame these officers one bit to get out of the car and put a shot on him. A second shot, again, both of them. Now, I will note this. That from this perspective, I think these officers got hits and, and, well, I can't tell you whether or not they did. They eventually got a bunch of hits on the guy, but a gunfight is two way. And so again, in this last moment where he is thinking, I'm, I'm just asking you friends, please tell, hear me. Is that, is he wondering, gosh, this was a great idea or is he wishing he had stayed inside his house? Clearly he is wishing he has stayed inside uh, the, his house. Clearly he is wishing that he hadn't done this. Please use this as an example of why we don't do this kind of thing. Finally, of course, again, I'm just assuming this man is not a bad person. I don't, I, I don't blame these officers one bit for what they did. In fact, I think what they did was right. But given the fact that what he's done has just made some huge tactical blunders to get to where he is and put him in this spot where these officers had to do exactly what they should have done, what any citizen should have done. And this is one of the reasons that we practice spiritual fitness. And that starts with being a good, sane, sober, moral, prudent person and making sure that you take prudent action. Secondly, that your loved ones know that you love them and that you've solved any conflicts that you can and that you do right in every opportunity so that you don't end up in these kinds of situations where you leave things undone at the end of your life. And then third, you make sure that your relationship with Jesus is strong because you will need it on that day and may not have time to get it. Let's learn the lessons from this one. It's a bad outcome and that outcome was entirely preventable. Let's do better.